You can turn your King James Bible to the book of Psalms. We're going to go to Psalm 7. Um, I want to talk to you today about a very happy, cheery subject. And before I get started, I'm going to smile because I get sick and tired of people saying, you never smile. You just never smile. That's an absolute statement that I never smile. Okay. So right now, here today, April 24th, 2024, I'm going to prove these people wrong. Okay. See, it's a smile. I really, truly am smiling. This is a real one. Okay. See, smile, smile there. Now you can no longer make the statement that I never smile. I just did. And I smile all throughout my videos, you know. Hey, people are so wicked. But uh, today is going to be a very happy, cheery study. Okay? And it will be. I'm not being sarcastic. For me as a Christian, I look and I see the wrath of God falling upon the wicked and I say, praise the Lord for that. Hey, I have a God that judges in this earth. Uh, there's a, you know, the judge of all the earth. He does right. You know? I, I don't know. I don't see how uh, a just and loving God could send people to hell and burn for all of eternity. I do. <laughs> I've studied enough of evil of this world and everything else. If I mean, if you if you could see, I mean, God. The Bible talks about God judges the hearts of men. He knows people's thoughts. All right, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. If you were God and could see in five seconds what God sees. Just, you know, five seconds of his time, you get to see everything that's going on on this earth. You'd probably say, let's, why wait? Let's just send them all to hell right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to say that God, uh, it, you know, no man deserves to burn in hell for all, ever and whatever. You're very ignorant. You're very naive. You have the mind of a little child or something, okay? That uh, everything's fine. Everything's happy. What are you, a Teletubby or something, I guess? You know, la, la, eh, you know. <laughs> Walking around the earth, little happy bubble that you're in. Um, no, God has instruments of death, five of them. And I'll tell you what, I just did this as a quick study and just kind of, we're going to go through a bunch of things. It's still, you know, pretty good amount of, of scripture here, but man, that I missed so many scriptures for this study. I mean, this could be a huge multi-part study. I mean, I could go through this and literally go eat over each one of the different instruments of death. You say, Brian, come on, this is dramatic. You shouldn't say instruments of death. That's the kind of preaching that will turn people away. Oh, well, you know, be so scary. Um, it's what the Bible says, okay? It isn't my little clickbait thing or whatever. It's what the Bible says. Let's, let me show you. Psalm 7, we'll begin in verse 10. My defense is of God, which serveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. God has unconditional love for you. God loves you. He wants to have a plan. Uh, the Bible never says God loves you. God loved you enough to send his son to die on the cross, but that's past tense. If you reject Jesus Christ, God's love is not on you. God's anger is right there for you. How do you know? Because it says God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day. Verse 12, if he turn not, the wicked in other words, he will wet his sword, God will. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. Right there it is. I didn't make it up. We're talking scripture here. God's five instruments of death. I'll show you what they are. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood, the wicked again. He made a pit, and digged it, and is fallen into, into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Um, when you see the judgment of God hitting, do you sing praise to the Lord? Or do you go along with the world and say, oh, that's such a shame. Oh, I don't, that, that's terrible and whatever. Always remember that. Okay, what are the five instruments of death? Now, there could be more, but I just thought I'll make it simple and I'll go with five. Thought about it, prayed about it. The Lord gave me a bunch of these and I was thinking about, okay, what would the other one be? And then it was finally, ding, you know, the Lord put it in my head. Number one. We have famine. Number two, 
pestilence. Number three, the sword. Number four, natural disasters, acts of God, in other words. And number five is the big one, fire. That's the big one. So let's uh, go through these. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And here you're going to see the Lord actually talking about some of these. Not all of them, but uh, a bunch of them. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 through 8. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Every Catholic priest claims to be Christ. So there's a good reference there. But look at this. Here's a couple of the weapons of death that the Lord uses. Verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. There's the sword. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, there's another one, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So it's interesting, the progression there. Wars lead to famines, pestilence, and then there's earthquakes involved in the whole thing as well. Hmm. So you have the sword, pestilence, famine, and natural disasters. Four of the five right there. Jeremiah chapter 24. Back to the Old Testament, to the book of Jeremiah chapter 24. Jeremiah 24. Ah, come on. Verse... 10, and I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. So you see the three there, sword, famine, pestilence, All right? Uh, sword, war comes to an area. You can't grow too many crops when there's missiles and bombs and tanks running across the fields and everything else. You know, Ukraine used to be the breadbasket of the world, they called it, I think, and the soil there is so rich and everything, and they were growing so many good crops. Not growing very many crops right now. Can promise you that. Uh, right now, the spring offensive, I think they're saying, is getting started over there where Russia's waiting for the ground, you know, you go through the spring thaw and it's all muddy and everything. You wait for that, the ground hardens up again. Time to get the tanks rolling. So, with the war that's going on, you're not making food. That leads to famine. Famine, when there's no food, it leads to pestilence. People start to get sick. Disease starts to spread. Why? Well, because it's just some kind of bad thing. The, the boogie monster came along and, and did whatever. No, it's because this is God's judgment. God's prepared the instruments of death. God's angry with the wicked every day. Jeremiah 25, verse 27 and 29. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 27. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at thy hand to drink, then shalt thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil on this city which is called by my name and shall be utterly, uh, and shall ye be utterly unpunished. Ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth, saith the Lord of hosts. War. But we're not seeing any of that today. Thankfully, um, there is no war in our future or anything else because everything's peaceful. Uh, I mean, since we've got the United Nations after World War II, you know, it's just been wonderful since then. Uh, well, actually, no, it hasn't, but uh, yeah. Jeremiah chapter 29, turn to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 17 through 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will send upon them the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, and will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Well, that's what God thinks of the present-day Jews, a lot of them. Not all of them, but the ones that have mingled and all the other stuff, all the abominations that these people are doing, they're, they're like vile figs 
They cannot be eaten. They are so evil. The wrath of God has come upon them to the uttermost. Verse 18, And I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth, to be a curse and an astonishment and an hissing and a reproach among all the nations whither I have driven them, because they have not hearkened to my words, saith the Lord, which I sent unto them by my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them. But ye would not hear, saith the Lord. Hear ye therefore the word of the Lord, all ye of the captivity which whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon. Hmm. They wouldn't hear his words. So the Lord sends a sword, and the sword is followed by famine and then pestilence. Romans chapter 13. Let's go to the New Testament now. To Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Boy, our politicians here in America are just so terrible, aren't they? I mean, Joe Biden, I mean, what the kind of things that these people are passing, they're not, they're completely out of touch with the people's desires and, you know, taxation without representation. Yeah, certainly. $85 billion going to Ukraine again to a war that we're not winning and it's just slaughtering us. What's going on? Well, rulers aren't a terror to good works, but to the evil. Are the people out here evil? Out there in the world? Yes, they are. Well, then the rulers are going to start to be a terror to them. The rulers are going to be the instruments uh, that are in God's hands that God can go down and he can say, you know, he actually called Nebuchadnezzar at one point, my servant Nebuchadnezzar. All right. God, the heart of the king is in God's hand and he can turn it. The powers that be, they're subjected to God. God can tell them what to do. And so, oh, the, the leaders are so evil and everything else. Well, it's a reflection of the people. Don't complain about it if you're evil yourself. Second Peter chapter 3. <clears throat> See all these people, we need to bring back America. And then they, you know, just cuss a blue streak using the F word in every sentence and things. I mean, that, that was at a time, that was kind of a really low type of thing. If you use profanity, especially the F word, um, you're kind of a very low intellect. You know, now so many people do it. It's just, you know, because Hollywood has programmed people to do it. The vile figs that are so evil. Um, they program people to do this. They just use all kinds of profanity. But you're going to get America back. And you deserve some kind of a good politician, right? No, I don't think so. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Knowing this, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep... All things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Never forget that part. Oh, God's not willing that any should perish. Finish the verse. All should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth 
righteousness. Looking forward to that. Can't wait to see a kingdom where it where dwelleth righteousness. Let's see about another fire judgment here. Revelation chapter 20. It's interesting because I remember many years ago, um, there was a big flood that hit Haiti. You know, and you know, all these people were dying and all this other bad stuff. And I was talking to a Baptist guy I knew at the time. And he said, man, he said, what do you think about all the flooding in Haiti? And I said, they deserved it. And he said, oh, well, brother, yeah, I, 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 man, I said, no, no, you don't understand, brother. I said, they actually, the president dedicated the country to Satan. You can look it up. I mean, it was a couple years back, you know, I don't know, not a couple years, probably maybe 15, 20 years ago or something. They dedicated the nation to Satan. And then they get a big flood, wipe them out, and they say, oh, why would God allow this? Because you dedicated your nation to Satan. God's prepared the instruments of death. All right, natural disasters are one of those. Oh, there's all these bad things happening, all these tornadoes and everything else, and they're using directed energy weapons to attack uh, different places and things. What's well, the condition of the people? God is angry with the wicked every day. But you want a little teddy bear up there. You know, what was the little teddy bear that you used to push his belly or whatever else? The little, uh, I forget what it was, snuggle bear or something. I forget what the thing was. Some fabric softer and you push his bear. No, it was a Pillsbury Doughboy. That's what it was. You push a button and he go, his belly goes, hee hee. You know, that's what people think of God. You know, sweet little baby Jesus laying in the manger. Oh, he's so cute. You know, it's funny because the Catholics, they, they do an awful lot with Jesus as a baby. The Christ child comes at Christmas time and leaves you presents and things. And the, and the Christ, uh, venerate Mary and her little child there, you know. He's up there with his little crown on. You know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, he's not a child anymore. He's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. But, you know, when you get priests that are perverts and they look at little children, oh, you know, yeah, that's probably why. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Fire is the future of all the wicked. You might die from uh, the sword. You might die from pestilence. You might die from famine. Excuse me. Sword, famine, pestilence. You might die in an earthquake, in a tornado, whatever. But your ultimate destiny, if you're wicked, is you're going to burn. And you won't burn up. You'll burn forever. What's well, a cruel thing? No, it's, it, it would be cruel if God didn't provide a way out. But Jesus Christ is the way out. You can get saved. Well, I'm not really sure. Then you deserve it. It's just that simple. You deserve what's coming to you. Matthew chapter 15. We'll end here. Such a simple thing to be saved. But so many people don't want it. Matthew chapter 15, beginning in verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. You better be careful what you say. I get so sick and tired of hearing people just, you know, profanity, profanity coming out of their mouth all the time. That's what's defiling you. I mean, you're just walking around, just no control over your tongue and just bleep, 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 just profanity. What do you think it's happening or what it's doing to your soul? It's darkening it. You're becoming more evil by the day. Verse 12, Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. 
Huh. Which is what we read about way back there in um, Psalm 7. Fallen into the ditch which, which he made. Talks about here. It says, they both shall, or, both shall fall into the ditch. Interesting. Verse 15. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto this, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not yet do, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts and murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. All right. He's talking about ceremonial washing, okay, for all you foolish atheists out there. I'll use the biblical term instead of saying stupid. Uh, foolish atheists out there, when Jesus is saying you don't have to wash your hands, he's talking about ceremonial washing to be seen of men. Oh, and wash my hands, and a guy comes up with a special little white towel and dries your hands for you. That's what he's talking about. Jesus understands the thing of you shouldn't, you know, have dirty hands and eat like that or something. People try anything to attack the Lord. So, um, it just it, this whole study came about, I'll just be honest and tell you about this, because I remember seeing some, uh, there was some guy, I think, that was, uh, he was buying guns, and then he would sell them, and he, you know, lawfully sell them. And uh, he got SWAT teamed for that, and they came up to his front door, and they literally took tape and put it over his doorbell camera. Why would police do that? Because they're being used to attack evil people. Um, the more evil that Americans bring into their homes, the more you listen to things that are that will defile your mind. The more evil you put into your heart, and it comes out of your mouth, um, the more bad things are going to be seen around this country. I'm not saying nothing bad ever happens to a Christian. Of course, there are things that will, bad that will happen to a Christian, but um, lost people, there's no protection. For you, I would suggest you look into the salvation and truly get saved and ask God, pray to God in faith, nothing wavering, and say, God, I want to know the truth. If this Denlinger guy, if he's right, uh, I don't really like him. I don't like his personality. He doesn't smile enough. Uh, whatever. <laughs> um, I don't want anything to do with that guy. Hopefully I can be saved and not have to fellowship with that nut or something. I, I don't care. <laughs> All right, but look into it, check into it, get a King James Bible. They're still available. You can go, you can get one of these. All right, look into things, clean up your speech, improve your IQ. It's not a, a good sign of uh, mental um, intelligence. I'll say it that way. If you're going around using profanity all the time, it takes far more creativity and a much higher IQ to actually use proper English and not use profanity around everybody that you get near. All right. But, uh, so, but as a Christian, I just want you to remember this. You're a Bible believer. Remember God's five instruments of death. And if you can think of any others, put them in the comment section down below too, by the way, or just do, you know, other verses that line up with this. Um, I love to see other verses. I mean, there's so many to talk about the thing of God using fire to judge and God using other things to judge. Uh, we're going through the book of Psalms and just verse after verse, I'm thinking, oh, that could have been put into this study too, but just wanted to do a quick study here. But um, love to read your comments. So, but uh, let's not have the same sorrow that the world feels when we see judgment. Let's look and say, good. I'm sure the Lord took care of somebody there. Glad to see it. So that is going to be it. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Stand by the book, brethren.